in your living room with your family. But you can join in with us on this little piece right here. Let's talk about it. Yep. He can do it. He can do it. Oh, you got it. He can do it. He can do it. It's not too hard for him. You, he can do he it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Come on, sing it again. He can do it. He can do it. Anybody believe it out there? He can do it. 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 Let's take it up, ladies. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. I know he can. He can do it. He can do it. There's nothing too hard for him. He can do it. He can do. He can do anything. Anything. He can do it. He can do anything. He can do anything. Anything. can do anything but fail. Thank God for Jesus and, and all that he's doing. Just a few announcements this morning that I want to bring to your attention. The fast starts today. The Bible says that, uh, that some things will not remove or be removed without fasting and praying. Yes. Amen. So we're going to, as a church, I'm asking you all to join me for a seven day period of fasting. We're going to be fasting from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. Hallelujah. What are we going to be doing during the fast? Well, we're going to be praying for one. Number two, I'm asking that you would only, only, only take in into your body liquids. That means juices are acceptable, uh, a broth is acceptable, and water is acceptable. So you can do that uh, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And after 6 p.m., you may eat that which God has laid on your heart to eat. But between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., praying, we're praying for our nation, we're praying for our president, we're praying that God would bring an answer to the trouble that's in the land. Amen. How many of you all believe Amen. that there's still power in prayer? Amen. On, on Wednesday, we are back in our small groups. We, we're encouraging everyone to be a part of small groups ministry. It's very, very important. You can call Dr. Holmes at 314 280 3711 if you need to be a part of a small groups if you are already in a small groups I want to invite you to get a friend call someone and tell them to be a part of small groups ministry 314 280-3711 Dr. Holmes is waiting for you to help you to get into the group that God has laid it on your heart. Before small groups some of the groups are starting at different times but many of the small groups are starting at 7 a.m. I am going to be live praying at 6.30 on Wednesday from 6.30 to 6.55 and then you can get online with your small groups partners on Wednesday. We hope that you all will join us. We have also canceled our drive-in worship for next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We are following the mandate of our governor who has asked all of us to stay at home, to stay indoors doing this epidemic from, uh, I believe, April the 4th until the, the 30th of April. If you need information, anything about COVID-19, we've got information on our website, Prince of Peace Church, stl.com. We have a place where you can find out all of the information. If there's things that you want to know, economic, 
if you want to know about uh, the, the economical things that are out there, the support, the uh, there are some food pantries out there. We've got all of that online. Just go to Prince of Peace Church, stl.com, and you can get all of that information. For those of you all who remember, the fourth Sunday in April is our 97th church anniversary amen praise the name of the lord the lord has blessed us to have 97 years amen. of faithful amen. service amen. what i'm asking you all on the fourth sunday if you would if you would would you please would you please make place a 97 dollar seed into this ministry never 97 dollars so that into your church on the fourth Sunday in April as we celebrate what God has done for us. God has been really, really, really good. I want to encourage you all to check in on one another. Uh, many of our ministries have already been doing that, but there's always some individuals who can fall between the cracks. That's why we must be there for one another. We must, we must call one another. We need, we need to go and, and ask God's blessings over one, of, one another. Make sure that no one, no no one goes without a call or if there's a need that we step in many of our members have been experiencing some transitions in their family loss of loved ones and friends you all that's why we need to pray for one another Amen. and be there for one another Amen. we're so grateful we're so grateful for the power of God that's holding us together because can't nobody keep you together like Jesus Amen. I, I, Amen. I, I almost said our choir but our truth Trio, our trio today, God has just blessed them in a wonderful way. We so thank God for our music ministry as they are presenting to you at home what it means to worship God. Amen. And after they sing, we're coming back with the preachment in, in the name of Jesus. I'll see you in a few minutes. God bless you. Jesus, 
Yes, sir. I love you. Talk about it. Jesus. Tell him. I praise you. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus for loving me. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, there's no one like you Jesus. for keeping me. Bless you. your name, God. Thank Jesus. you for healing I me. Pray. Sing, ladies. Jesus for loving me. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, there's no one like you on, Jesus. Jesus for keeping me. There's no one like you Jesus. for healing. There's no one like you Jesus. for loving. Me. Oh, 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 Jesus. Yeah. There's no one like you for keeping. There's no one like you for healing. There's no one like you for loving. Oh, oh, Jesus. There's no one like you for keeping. There's no one like you for healing. There's no one like you for loving. Oh, oh, Jesus. There's no one like you for keeping. There's no one like you for healing. There's no one like you.
tears There's no one like you Excellent in all your ways. Hallelujah. Right yes, now, God. God. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like Glory God. to your name, Jesus. Oh, we bless you today, Jesus. There's no one like Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for doing new things, God. Thank you. Right now, God. Right now, God. Right now, Thank God. Thank you for doing greater things, God. Yes, God. God. Thank you, God. Thank you for Thank healing, you, God. God. Thank you for regulating minds, Thank oh God. you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're still wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Forever. Yes, yes. You are in control of all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, God. Right now, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. It still works. Yes, it does. The blood of Jesus still works. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Yes, Thank God. you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Nevertheless, not as I will, 
but as you did. Yes, yes. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me? One hour. One hour. Right. One. Yes. Watch and pray that she enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, yes. Again, the second time he went away and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father. If this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were very heavy. And so he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And then he came to his disciples and said to them, How are you still sleeping, sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise! Let us be going. Amen. See, my betrayer is at hand. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Or look who's ever in your house and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Pastor needs all your prayers. Pastor needs all your prayers. And all your amens. And all your amens via comments. He's going to preach from this. years old and his family has left him home alone accidentally the day before the day before he's left home he has an argument with his his brother and out of that argument his family puts him in the attic when they wake up they wake up late and they're in a rush trying to get out of the house and they accidentally leave him home alone while he's home alone he makes his own breakfast he makes his own dinner he shaves himself although he doesn't have hair on his face and then he discovers he discovers that there are some bandits in his neighborhood who are robbing houses now if you will call if you will call he sets up a strategic plan to protect his house let me go to the end of the movie because in the end of the movie he survives but not only being home alone does he survive he thrives here is the first prophecy for your life here's the first shout this experience that we are going through we are going to survive thank you jesus but not only are we going to survive we're going to thrive we just don't want to survive it we want things to be better on the other side of it anybody believe that when we come out of this god is going to help us to be better coming out of it than we were when we went in it i have scriptural president to tell you about surviving and thriving after the issue when the children of israel went into captivity for 450 years 
when God sent Moses down to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, when they came out, they did not come out the same way they went in. They came out with treasure. They came out with livestock. They came out with animals. They came out with jewelry because God doesn't let you go through trouble and then don't turn around and bless you double. Oh, that's a good shouting right there. Anybody believe that on the other side of this, that God has a blessing that I have never seen before? Thank you, oh God. But it starts, people of God, when God calls a season of being alone. Now, do not confuse being alone with being lonely. Yeah. Loneliness can be a curse, but being alone can be a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll preach real good. That'll preach real good. That, 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 there's a difference. Some of you all can, can testify that, that you've been in a room full of people. Yeah. And even though you're in a room full of people, you still can be alone. But it, you don't trip off of it because you know how to entertain yourself. Because sometimes you're the best company you can ever be in the first place. Yeah. But then, but then I've I've had to I've had to counsel married couples, and I'll never forget trying to minister to a married woman. And her her complaint was this. This was her complaint. She said, Pastor. I'm lonely. I, I said, wait a minute, night. What, what you say? She says, I'm I'm married. Wait a minute, you got somebody, but you're lonely. That's why I think single people ought not to be in a big hurry trying to get married too quickly. Because when you're single, at least you know why you lonely. <laughs> there are people who are married and who don't even know that they're lonely. The marriage has become a curse so God says I'm, I'm going to call you to a period where you are alone not lonely where you are alone well why God why would you why would you want us why would you want us to be alone why we can't go to work why why we can't come to church but you're calling us to a season where we are alone Three things, write, write these th three things down. One, during a season of aloneness, God develops you. N number two, during a season of alone, God shows you your destiny. Wow. And then number three, during your season of alone, yeah. God reveals to you Divine assignment. Yes, oh my God. Develop destiny and divine assignment. C come, come with me. Come with me to Matthew 26. Here is Jesus, the last week of his earthly assignment. Ooh, that, that, that's, good. that's good. That's good. He is he has he has been developed by God. He, he, is, he has a destiny with the cross. Uh -huh. he, he has a divine assignment given to him by God that he cannot miss. Yeah. So in the midst of this development, this destiny, and this divine assignment, God says, I need to get you alone. <laughs> Bless your name, God. As you are walking in this journey called life, God says, there are some things I cannot get you to because you got too many people around you. So in order to develop you, in order for you to understand your destiny, in order for you to understand your divine assignment, I have to remove you and put you in a place of being alone. 
as much as your pastor loves you as much as I want to give and give to you as much as I want to pour into you I wanted you to understand there are some things I cannot give to you not only I cannot give it to you every no prophet no preacher no missionary no bishop there are things people can do with you but they cannot do for you I can drink with you but I cannot drink for you I, I can eat with you but I cannot Eat, eat for you. I can sleep in a room with you, but I cannot sleep for you because if you're in a room and I'm sleeping and you awake, when we, when you, when, when, when the morning time comes, my, the rest in my body ain't gonna be your rest. There's some things you have to get for yourself, and getting these things for yourself only God can give it to you. And so God says, there's something I need to give to you. There's something I need to deposit into you. And in order to do it, I must get you alone. Don't be afraid of a season of being alone. So what do you do? What does God do in this season? I'm preaching good. This feels good already. What, what does God do in this season of having you alone not loneliness because that is what the enemy wants to put in your spirit I, i'm experiencing no god does that he don't have nothing to do with loneliness he says i'm getting you alone alone why does he get you alone first of all he gets you alone listen to this so that you can rearrange some relationships yeah and you would not have rearranged the relationships if I hadn't got you alone. In verse 36 in the text, in verse 36 in the text, it says, Then Jesus came with them called to a place called Gethsemane. You theologians understand that the word Gethsemane means a place of pressing. It is the Olive Garden. It is the place where the priest, the temple priest, would go to the, uh, to the garden and he would take the olives. And after taking the olives, he would press the olives. He would crush the olives. He would pulverize the olives so that he might extract oil from the, uh, uh, from the uh, olive. And he would take the oil to the temple. The oil was a symbol of the anointing of God. How did you get the anointing? How did you get the how did you get the oil? You got the anointing from the oil. The oil came from the pressing and the crushing and the pulverizing. The priest wasn't trying to destroy the olive, but in order to get the anointing out of it, he had to press it, he had to crush it, he had to pulverize it. God does not have you in a season of being alone because he's trying to kill you, but he can't get the best out of you until he presses you, till he crushes you, until he pulverizes you. The devil trying to make you think you are lonely. No, God's trying to get something out of you that he could have never got out of you unless he took you to Gethsemane. Yeah. Thank you, God. And when I get to Gethsemane, yes. well, watch what happens. The, the scripture says, the text says, Jesus came to Gethsemane. He comes to the place of pressing, crushing, and pulverizing. He comes to Gethsemane. He brings him to the place, the Olive Garden. Did you notice who wasn't at the garden with him? He had 12 disciples. But he only brings a fourth with him. One third. Peter, the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. Peter, James and John. But he left nine at home. He brought three to the place of crushing. Because God is trying to get your anointing out of you.
And in order to get the best out of you, or in order to get the anointing out of you, he says, no, you cannot bring the other nine. You can have three. When he gets, the further he gets into the garden, the smaller his crowd gets. He leaves nine at home. He brings three to the garden. He says, stay here while I go and pray. When he comes back, only one is awake, Peter, when he speaks to him. But then Peter falls asleep. The farther he goes into God, the smaller he his crowd would be. Why would God say that? I'm preaching real good already. Why is God, why was God saying that? It's because listen, everybody, everyone cannot cannot handle the anointing that's on your life. Everyone, oh I feel your Holy Ghost. Everyone cannot handle where God is getting ready to take you. Everybody cannot handle your destiny. Everybody cannot understand your divine assignment. And everybody will not appreciate the development that's getting ready to happen in your life. Oh my God. And please learn from the words of the patriarchs of scripture. Because what you are going through they've been through already read Genesis chapter 38 and Joseph will tell you that everybody everyone cannot appreciate or understand the calling over your life God got Joseph alone he was alone in the pit come on here he was alone when he was at Potiphar's house come on here he was alone when he was in prison but he made one mistake he shared his big dreams with his brothers and they tried to kill him he had a destiny he had a divine assignment and he tried to share it with his brothers and they tried to kill him why because little people cannot handle big dreams where God is trying to take you what God is going to do with you everybody everyone cannot handle the things that God is going to do with you so that's why God has to begin to downsize your crowd notice the more anointed that you get the smaller your crowd will become because God doesn't want you so hooked to people that you miss out on your divine assignment you got to learn during this season you got to learn this season you got to learn because sometimes people we have become too needy and you think that you need some of the people that you really don't need and you're being fooled by some of the people that you thought that you need and then they hurt your feelings and then you can't do your assignment because you're so busy nursing what they did to you but you need to learn from Jesus just because people are hugging you and maybe that's why God has us in this season where we can't shake hands and we can't hug no more maybe, maybe there's a reason why God is doing it I said well God why is that why you have why do you have us in the season but because we can't hug people we can't kiss them and we can't shake hands because God says I need you to learn from Jesus's life I said why he said because when when Judas got ready to portray him he he betrayed him with a kiss I'm trying to let you know that everybody that's kissing on you ain't in love with you <laughs> people have an interesting way of having one face in front of you oh my god and another face behind your back so God says God says I, I gotta get you I got to I got to get you alone I, I, I want I want everybody to you don't don't put it on here. I, I, I just want you to send me a, a text and say and just say, Pastor, I'm the one who God has been snatching some friendships away. Yes, sir. I've been I've been snatching some people I used to be close to. He's been snatching me away from it. Hear me well. Hear me well. Many times people won't be desperate for God until they get away from some people because people can be a distraction to your destiny we might be we might be spending too much time with some people who are diverting God's plan for your life 
preach, kill Patrick. I'm doing the best that I can. They are diverting you. They got you on Facebook. You spending minutes, hours, responding to stuff that don't even make any difference. You on Facebook, they go, if you love me, if you love me, respond to this, to this post and send it back to me and to 10 other people. And if you send it to 10 other people, they're going to be blessed. Well, let me tell you something. I don't have to send it back to you and I don't have to send it to 10 other people in order to be blessed. When I woke up, I was already blessed. I've been blessed the, the minute, but listen, I, I just saw my birth certificate just yesterday and, and I didn't even realize this. It said I was born on July the 18th, 1967. I knew that, but then it said I was born at 847 in the morning. Guess what? I didn't just start getting blessed today. I've been blessed since July the 18th at 8.47 a.m. Now, if you ain't blessed, I ain't talking to you. But everybody that's blessed, and you know you blessed because God's hand is on your life, go ahead and say thank you, God, for your blessings over my life. Thank you, Lord. I'm blessed. I'm a, I'm a walking blessing. Every time I talk, I'm blessed. Every time I wake up, I'm blessed. Every time I pick up a book, I'm blessed. And matter of fact, you ought to want to connect to me because everything I'm connected to is blessed. I'm blessed when I come in and I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my house. I'm blessed when I come to church. I'm blessed in my, in my living room. I'm blessed in my kitchen. I'm blessed in my bathroom. I'm blessed in my basement. When I think of God's goodness over my life, I've got to declare I am blessed. <laughs> Ooh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I didn't just get blessed. I was blessed when I was broke. Good God Almighty. There's never been a moment in my life that I have not been blessed. But people will distract your understanding of what God is doing. Watch this. Jesus goes to Gethsemane. He goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And the deeper he goes, the less people he has. And this, I like this in, in the text. You know, he comes back and he said, wait, wait a minute now. Could you, could you stay with me with one hour? Um, could you just stay with me one hour? Then, watch this. This is going to help you. Jesus said, sleep on. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get to the point, place that you got to let people just say, sleep on, child. In order for you to go and do what God has for you, you got to protect your sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Text that, text that, text that, text that to every, text that to every friend. Text these words. Protect your sweet spot. Gethsemane. That, that's what he says. It, it says he came to the place. And now he tells them in the place, the people who, who, who don't understand his destiny, that don't understand the development, that, that don't understand the divine assignment, he's, he says, sleep on. Because I got to protect what God is getting ready to do in my life. You don't let people ruin what God, I don't care if it's family, you don't let people ruin what God is getting ready to do in your life. And, and, and here, here, here's what you have to do. Here's that. You have to free yourself of the approval, preach Kilpatrick, of other people. Because sometimes we get locked in to the approval of what other people say about us. And we lose our destiny. We do not develop and we do not understand our divine assignment. There's a great book by Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages. I want to encourage you to read it. I, I like the book. There's just a little bit of an issue that I, I want to throw into his book. 
little, little bit of criticism. I like the book. I encourage the book. I think every married couple ought to read the book. I think every couple that's getting ready to, to get married to read the book. And, and listen, you, anybody, if you just, if you just a person and you want to be loved, you ought to read the book. It's called The Five Love Languages. His argument is, is that sometimes relationships don't work out well because people don't know the love language of the person that they're dealing with. That could be your boo. It could be your mom. It could be who, whoever it is that's in your life that's significant. And he says that one of the reasons that relationships are not fulfilled and people feel lonely is because that they're, they're not getting their love language ministered to. There's five love languages. Write these down. Write these down. I'm going to give you five. So you don't even have to read the book. It's free. It's free. I'm going to give it to you free. Here, here's the essence of the book. He has five love languages. One is the, the acts of service. Is one when people do things for you. So when people do things for you, people feel loved. All right. Number two is gifts. That, that some, some folks love language is gifts. So in order for me to feel loved, you give me gifts. Okay. The third one is, y'all writing these down, write them down, is quality time. Quality time. The reason I think Gerald doesn't love me is he don't spend any quality time with me. And so I need him to spend some quality time. And then fourth, the fourth love language is physical touch. Physical touch. Helen, that's why I cheated on Helen, because she didn't give me any physical touch. So, so he defined his love language as, as, as physical touch. Then the fifth one is words of affirmation. That, that the way I'm encouraged, that whenever I do something, I need somebody. If I'm at church and I'm picking up a piece of paper, I need somebody to come by and say, Ooh, Sister Johnson, praise God, you picked up that piece of paper. And so if no one comes and tells you, thank you for picking up that piece of paper, you're going to feel like nobody in the church cares about you, nobody supports you, so you're not going to work in the ministry because they can't appreciate you. Now, I like the book. And I don't have a lot of trouble with the five languages. Is one issue I have. I want to tell Mr. Gary Chapman that might be good for other people, but when you are on assignment from God, you cannot get all of your encouragement from other people. If you're going to grow in God, you got to learn not to be dependent on what other people do. Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm getting ready to say amen for myself. I'm getting ready to clap for myself. I'm getting ready to shout for myself. Why are you saying that? I'm saying that is because if you don't do something for me, an act of service, I know how to act for myself. <laughs> if, if you decide that you're not going to have any quality time with me, that's all right. I know how to take myself out on a date. Amen, Pastor Kilpatrick. Listen, let me tell you something. If you don't ever give me a gift, that's all right. I got my own job. Matter of fact, I like, I know what I like better than anybody else. I will go and buy myself the cologne I want, the shoes I want, and the suit that I want. And then if you decide you're not going to touch me, that's cool too. Because the Lord has taught me how to dry my own tears. And then if you don't say, hey man, I'm standing in a sanctuary this morning. And it is a sanctuary that has, has the capacity for 1,180 people. And ain't nobody here but me and a few other, other saints. But do you think I'm going to let that stop me from telling God thank you because if you can't preach by yourself you can't preach to nobody else yeah. it starts with you it is my relationship with God I, 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 I'm, I'm just amazed I'm just amazed that the preacher said Doc, I can't preach without a crowd said, well, what are you talking about a crowd wasn't there a crowd wasn't there when you were broke and God helped you yeah. <laughs> the crowd wasn't there when God turned your midnights into day. Yeah. See, 
See, we keep turning people into needs when they just nice. No. <laughs> it's nice to have it, but it ain't necessary. You got to put people in their place. People, you we are too connected, we're too tied to people. And when you're too tied to people, you cannot connect to God in the way that you ought to. You need God, but people are nice. Woo. It would be nice to have hundreds of here, but it ain't necessary for me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's why he says, he says, rearrange. Rearrange. And this is a long time. Not loneliness. He says, rearrange some relationships. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? The number two. He says in the text, the text is teaching us, learn how to reassess your rationale. Rearrange relationships. That's number one. Rearrange relationships. Number two, reassess your rationale. What, what, what does that mean? Your thinking, your approach, in your thinking capacity, he says, I need you to rethink that. I need you to rearrange that. How you come to the conclusion. Th this part of the text really blessed me. This is very, very personal. This is very, very personal. Because it blessed me in such a phenomenal way. In verse 37, watch this. This this, this just really. And, it, and I think everyone, everyone, when you look through the scripture, you can say, ooh, that's my verse. This is my verse. This. Well, this is my verse. Verse 37 is my verse. It says, and he took with him Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee. And then, here's my verse. Here's Pastor Kilpatrick's verse. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Verse 38. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Why, why is that your voice? Why is that your verse? Because God is developing me. God is developing you too. God is, God is showing you your destiny. God is showing you your destiny too. And then God is revealing my divine assignment. And he's pressing, he's crushing, he's pulverizing you in this season. And your anointing is beginning to flow. Because you can't be effective. You can't do what God has for you without God's anointing affecting you. And when you become anointed and you know it's, ooh, that's God's power. Ooh, God, God, God anoints you to sing. God anoints you to preach. God anoints you to, to pray. God anoints you over small groups to lead. People will look at you and they will, they will misjudge you. Because you're anointed. Because, because you, know, you, go, you know a scripture beyond the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want uh, the enemy will make you think that your anointing will dismantle your humanity and the truth is just because I'm anointed it does not take away my humanity just because I'm called to preach, just because you pray, doesn't mean that things won't hurt you, doesn't mean that things won't make you cry. Thank you, Jesus. Because, you know, I, I've been, I've been, I've been church hopping, you know, some of you all have been doing that to me. I've been watching other ministries broadcasts. And, and it seemed like every time I would jump to a pastor, they just so strong. Oh, we're going to get through this. Oh, God is a mighty God. And I, I was like, oh, look at all that faith. That's wonderful. I was like, it's wonderful. I, I said, but if, but if I want to be real and honest, this is troubling to me. I, I, I know all of the pastors. I know all of the prophets. They, they're, they're saying all these big words and all of this, this wonderful, wonderful stuff about, oh, this doesn't bother me. Y'all, it, it bothers me. If, 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 you're, if you're a singer, if you're a piano player, 
you, you, you want somebody to listen to what you sing and what you play? Right. If you're a cook, if you're a real cook, it, it's, it's good to have somebody to eat your food every now and then. And if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you're a preacher, if you're a pastor, if you're a pastor, you're going to want somebody to minister to. Right. It's hard, you all, it's hard for me. It's, it's heartbreaking to want to minister to people. And I can't do it like I would want to. It, it breaks my heart every time. I, I, I got a message this morning from a, from a member whose aunt died last, just last night. One, one story after another, I, I can just tell you of, of members who family has transitioned. Remember, her friend died from COVID-19. and just, just one story after another. And the pastor in me wants to run to their house and hug them and love on them. And I, I, I went to the hospital and, and I couldn't even go inside the hospital. I had to pray in the parking lot. My Lord. That bothers me. That bothers me. As a, as a shepherd over the sheep, I said, Lord, I, I want to see the sheep on Sunday. I want to see the sheep. I'm used to seeing the sheep. I want to see them on Wednesday. I want to hear them. And, and I, can't, I can't do it. And the spirit of loneliness, watch this, the spirit of loneliness started trying to overtake me. Yeah. And then God said, no, 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 no. I got you to, I got you at this period of alone. Why, why God, why I can't be there for them? He, he said, listen, first of all, don't try to do my job. <laughs> don't do my job. He said, don't do my job. And then he says, I'm trying to develop you. I'm trying to help you understand your de destiny and I have another divine assignment. And I said, okay, God, you got me alone and you got me alone and, 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 and I can't hear the choir like I used to. So the Lord said, encourage yourself like you just said about those five love languages. He said, encourage yourself. So while I was in my office, I said, Lord, help me, encourage me. So I can encourage other people. So I just started singing to myself. And then sometimes, that's what you got to learn. You got to learn. And, and, and you don't have to have a great voice. You don't have to, you don't have, to have a degree in music. Whatever, whatever tune, just sing to yourself. So I, I, I started singing to myself. I said, I need you like the ocean needs the waters or they'll run dry. And so I started seeing that loneliness just go like, I need you like the many stars above Needs the setting of the sky I saw the loneliness, it's starting to walk out the room I need you like tomorrow Needs the hours of today to pass by I can't be with them like I want to, Lord Lord, I need you more than ever so hear my humble cry. Then my grandmother jumped at me. I said, I need the old. I need the. Why did you live in Rome? Come on, sir. I, I need thee Jesus, I, I come to to the watch, watch, in my so here's, here's the next thing I did here's the next thing I did after I got through singing I need thee brother Joseph mm. this is what I said 
I said, not my will. <laughs> but yours be done. Not my will. Jesus says, after, after he prayed, he prayed the same prayer three times. He said, not what I want, but for your glory. <laughs> Woo. All of this, God, is for your glory. And if, hallelujah, God, if you get glory out of it, then it's all right with me. So we got to suffer. <laughs> Not my will. I, I wouldn't pick this for me. I don't pick my trouble. I don't pick what my challenges are. I don't pick what I'm going to go through. But God, if this is what I got to go through for your glory, not my will. Not my will. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. For your honor. For your praise. So if I got to cry out, and you get the glory out of it, let me cry. If I got a hurt and you get the glory out of it, let me hurt. This is not my will. Not my will. And then in verse 46, this, this bless me. This, this bless me. In a truly, I'm, I'm going to finish with this. We arrange some relationships. We assess your rationale. And then number three. It is now at this point you are ripe for revival. We we arrange relationships, we assess rationale, and now you are ripe for revival. Who, if you get this when I say this, well, if you get this, go on to just shout in your living room. Here it is. Watch what he says in verse forty-six. He says, "Rise." <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, "Rise." When he says this in the text, it is the breakthrough in the text. Watch what watch the sequence of events. He is digressing relationships. He started with 12, then he gets three. He goes from three to one to Peter, then he goes alone by himself. One. God is developing destiny and divine assignment. He's freeing himself from the approval of people because there's some things you can only do with alone with God. He tells him, y'all stay here, sleep on, because you have to tell some people, sleep on. And when he, here's the break, breakthrough in the text. In verse 46, he says to them, rise. <laughs> That's the breakthrough. Here's the reason why you ain't shouting yet. It's because people think Breakthrough and deliverance is the same thing, and they are not. Breakthrough occurs before deliverance. Ooh, that'll preach good. I, I, I was watching Dr. Phil. I was watching Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil had this man on his show who had been an alcoholic all of his life. He started drinking with his uncles when he was seven years old. He drunk from the time he was a child into his teenage years. Him and his friends would get drunk after school. After he, after he left the teenage years, he got married. He was drunk on his wedding day. He was drunk all through his marriage. He said he was drunk when he conceived all his children. He had three, uh, that's all he's known. He had lost three, four jobs. He had had several DWIs on his record. And, and, and the doctor said that if he didn't change his life, he was going to die. They were having an intervention on Dr. Phil's show. Dr. Phil says, doesn't your wife mean something to you? He said, yes, but I'm going to keep on drinking. He says, well, listen, does your job mean something to you? Because if you don't stop drinking, you're going to lose your job. He said, yeah, I like my job, but they've been putting up with me this long. I'm going to keep on drinking. And then he said, well, what about your children? Don't you love my children? He said, I love my children, but they got on my nerves when they were young. And so I want to hear about them. I'm going to keep on drinking. And he says, well, I got somebody else on the show who wants to talk to it and his little six-year-old granddaughter the same age when he started drinking came onto the stage and she said Paul Paul would you just try for me 
with tears running down his face. His wife couldn't get him to stop. His children couldn't get him to stop. His job couldn't get him to stop. But when he looked at his granddaughter, he said, baby, I'm going to try for you. Dr. Phil said, we are experiencing a breakthrough. Y'all don't have it. He was still a drunk. He was still an alcoholic. But when his granddaughter said, granddaddy, would you just try? He said, I'm going to try for you. He stood up in the, in, in the studio and he said, listen, listen, I'm going to be back in six months, uh, Dr. Phil, and I'm going to be standing again and I'm going to be a clean man. He didn't wait until he got to the deliverance. He stood at the point of breakthrough. You don't wait until you come out to rise. You rise at the breakthrough. This is Wednesday, y'all. This is Wednesday, y'all, y'all, when Jesus says rise. Ooh, I wish I had a praying church. This is Wednesday, y'all, when Jesus says rise. Because he knows on Thursday, he's going to be going from court to court. But Jesus said on Wednesday, rise. On Friday, they're going to kill him. They're going to hang him high, stretch him wide, and drop him low. But they're going to kill him. But on Wednesday, Jesus said rise. On Saturday, he was in. In the grave but on Wednesday Jesus said rise and then early Sunday morning he did on Sunday what he had already did on Wednesday don't wait to get back to church to tell God thank you tell God thank you right now rise up and tell God I love you I bless you thank you Lord Deliverance comes, but before deliverance, breakthrough leads you to deliverance. Rise. God has you in this special time. This is a long time. Not lonely. God is not trying to make you lonely. He wants to get you alone. Why, Pastor? So you'll rearrange some relationships. So you'll reassess your rationale and then you'll be ready you'll be ripe for the revival that's coming in your life somebody is experiencing a breakthrough right now you're rising you're rising rising even, even god god is telling you about an assignment part of your your first assignment is your own home that's your first assignment your daughter is your first assignment your son is your first assignment. Your relationship with your husband, with your wife, that's your first assignment. And if ain't nobody else there, you are your first assignment. You need to rise. Rise in your devotion. Rise in your prayer life. Rise in your scripture reading. Rise in your relationship with God as you are focusing on what God is going to do in your life. Would you pray with me this morning? Would you pray with me? We love you, God. We thank you, God, for the word that you send to us. How you help us, God, through the precious word of God. Yes, God, we are in a difficult season, but we still trust you. We still stand firmly on your word. Right now, God, you're developing us. <laughs> You're showing us destiny. You, you're giving us a divine assignment. And we can't hear what you want us to hear with all the clutter, with all the people. That's why you, he said, six feet, give, give, give me some distance. You might need to tell some people, give me a little distance. Give me a little space. Give me a little space. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I need to hear from God. Yes, yes, yes. I need to hear what he's trying to say to me. He's trying to say something to me. He's, he's speaking to you right now. Don't miss your, don't, don't miss your Gethsemane. Don't miss it. And so Father, as, as, as people all across the city, I, I saw somebody from Las Vegas was watching this morning. All the way in Nevada, God. Let your anointing flow all yes, across God. the city, all across the world, Lord. We don't want to miss our divine assignment Lord yes, yes. so speak to our heart right now in Jesus name we pray I want you to say this in your spirit 
Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. During your long time, God is talking to you. God is talking to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. I, I want you to make a commitment. I want you to make a commitment. I want you to make a commitment. Commitment to your My assignment. Hallelujah belongs you can even make a commitment to, to the church. You. you can go on Prince of Peace Church STL.com and say, I need to be a My part of a church family. Go on there and click and to it'll show you how to you. commit to the church. Make a commitment. God is speaking. <laughs> so you don't have to be in the church to do that. Go online. <laughs> you Become a part of the church family. That's all you do. And commit yourself. You I'm committing to ministering to my home, my family, you my church. Because God deserves it. God deserves it. This is His will. Not what you want. All of the glory Not what you want. It's what God you. wants. Start a diary. All Start a diary. Glory and begin to write down to the things that you are you. divine assignment. Write down how God's destiny for your life. Start All writing down how God is developing you. Belongs to Not my will, you. but for your glory. <laughs> my glory. Give me a, All of the glory, glory belongs to you. If you would, if you have your communion, would you bring it out? You deserve it. Pour your communion out as we get ready to, you to share it together. It. Thank you. You, you deserve it. Thank you. We bless your name. deserves our honor. You deserve it. He deserves all of the praise. You deserve it. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. If you would, if you would, wherever you are, would you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. get your bread in? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Even if you're at home, if you would stand with me, stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 Father, once again, we come. Giving you the glory. Thank you for your sacrifice over our lives. Now we sacrifice for the kingdom. Forgive us, Lord. And Lord, if we have anything, any grudges, anything against any person, take it out of our hearts. God, we want to honor you. We want to we connect with you. We love you. We bless you. Thank you for dying for us. And thank you for the cause of Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. take now the bread the bread symbolic of the body of Jesus let us now all eat together all the glory all the praise let us now take the wine symbolic of the blood of Jesus what can wash away my sins nothing but blood let's all drink together Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that this worship has blessed you. You have 
certainly been a blessing to us. Let's continue to pray for one another. I pray that you're joining me in fasting this, this week. We're going to be fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're asking God for a cure. We're asking God for protection. We're asking God to watch over us. Thank God for Jesus. And I pray I'll see you Wednesday and on next Sunday on Resurrection Sunday. God bless you and I'll see you later. God bless you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. May the peace of God be with you. May God's hand of protection be over you. May His face shine upon you in your coming in and your going out. May God will reign over our world. God bless our families and our children. May the love of God shine upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. You deserve it.